Welcome to the COBOL IT Learning Center. Getting started using Oracle Pro COBOL in the Developer Studio on Linux. In this module, we will show how to configure and use Oracle Pro COBOL in the Developer Studio on Linux. We are using the Oracle Pro COBOL sample program in these exercises. We will pre-compile and compile the sample program. Then we will run the Oracle Pro COBOL sample program in debug. After these exercises, you will understand key concepts and understand how to use Oracle Pro COBOL in the Developer Studio on Linux. Let's get started. Prerequisites For these exercises, the COBOL IT Compiler Suite and Developer Studio must be installed on your Linux machine. You are also required to have a C compiler and the GDB debugger installed as well. In these exercises, Oracle 11 GR2 is installed and running on Linux. The Oracle Instant Client SDK is also installed. The Oracle Instant Client SDK includes the Procob pre-compiler and sample program used in these exercises. For guidance, see the COBOL IT e-learning modules. Installing COBOL IT Compiler Suite Enterprise Edition on Linux, Installing COBOL IT Developer Studio on Linux and getting started with the COBOL IT Developer Studio. We will begin with an overview and some key concepts. Key concepts Integrating a pre-compiler with COBOL IT using the dash pre-process compiler flag. First, the COBOL IT compiler, COBC, prepares the COBOL source file, expanding copy files. This intermediate file is then passed to the preprocessor as an input file. The Oracle preprocessor is run from the preprocessor command file. In our example, the preprocessor command file is called precomp.bat. The Oracle preprocessor parses the input file, makes transformations, and writes an output file which is passed back to the COBOL IT compiler. Finally, the COBOL IT compiler compiles this source file and dynamically links the object with third-party libraries. Let's proceed now to more specifics, which you'll need to understand in order to use Oracle Pro COBOL in the Developer Studio in Windows. We need to make changes in the compiler configuration file. Let's start there. The compiler configuration files are located in the config directory of your installation. In these exercises we make modifications to the default configuration file which is named default.conf. We then save our changes in a file named oraconf.conf. Let's look at the modifications we made. In the compiler configuration file, we have made two changes to the default settings. We have changed the binary size setting to 248. And we have changed the binary byte order setting to native. After making these modifications, we have saved our new compiler configuration file, and renamed it oraconf.conf. Oraconf.conf should be located in the config subdirectory of your COBOL IT installation. We will now visit the Oracle Client Library folder. There. We will perform a link command that will simplify our developer studio configuration. This is the Oracle client library folder. At the command line, type lnlibclntsh.so.11.1libclntsh.so. This creates a link to the Oracle client library, and restores the file extension that the linker expects. Now let's launch the Developer Studio and begin our exercise. This is the Developer Studio. We have created a project, and imported the Oracle sample program which is called Procopdemo.pco. We have also included precomp.sh which is the script file we will use to invoke the preprocessor. Before we perform our exercises, let's quickly review our window preferences settings. On the preferences screen, we expanded the general option, and then expanded the editors option. Then, 
we selected text editors. On the text editors screen, we selected show line numbers. This is very useful, particularly when debugging. Next, we selected the workspace option. On the workspace screen, we deselected build automatically, and selected the refresh, and save automatically functions. Next, we selected the run debug option. We expanded the run debug option, and selected perspectives. For the option titled open the associated perspective when launching, we've selected always. This will cause the debugger perspective to open when a debug operation is performed. This completes the workspace configuration. To save settings, click on the apply button. Then, click OK to return to the developer studio. Let's take a quick look at our sample program. This is the Oracle Pro COBOL sample program. The Oracle Pro COBOL sample program is called ProCobDemo.PCO. As you can see, it contains embedded SQL statements. So, it must be pre-compiled before it can be compiled with the COBOL IT compiler. ProCobDemo.PCO is included with the Oracle Instant Client SDK. Let's take a look at our project properties now. Project Properties. Right click on the project name in the navigator window, and select Properties from the drop down window. This will open the Properties screen. On the Property window, select COBOL Properties. On the COBOL Properties windows, select Enable Source Settings to see the interface for setting project properties and compiler flags. There are two settings on the Project tab that we will be reviewing. Please notice. COBOL program extension to pre-process before compile is set to PCO. As a result, all source files in our project that have a PCO extension will apply the dash pre-process compiler flag and run the pre-processor command file. Next, the pre-processor command is set to precomp.sh. Precomp.sh is the pre-processor command file which is designed to pre-process the source file with the .pco extension. Please note that in our debugging exercises, we will be debugging the original source code, which is the default behavior. If you wish to debug the pre-processed source code, you can use the fdebug exec compiler flag, which is also included on this tab. For more information about debugging pre-processed source code, please consult your COBOL IT documentation. Let's take a look at the preprocessor command file now. This is the preprocessor command file. When you select a preprocessor command file, the developer studio associates it with the dash preprocess compiler flag. Precomp.sh is our preprocessor command file. The script calls the Oracle precompiler to preprocess the input file and produce an output file. The output file will be compiled by the COBOL IT compiler. Now, let's look at our compiler flags. On the environment tab, we have set the dash L compiler flag to the Oracle client library folder. On the language tab, we have set the dash conf compiler flag to oraconf.conf. This will cause the modified compiler configuration file we created to be used by the compiler. Since this file is located in the config directory of our installation, it does not require a full path. On the link tab, we have set the dash o compiler flag to place output files into the object directory. On the link tab, we have also set the dash l lib compiler flag. Scroll down to the bottom of the link tab screen to see the setting. We have scrolled down to the bottom of the link tab screen. Here, we have set the dash lib compiler flag to CLNTSH. This will cause the Oracle client library lib CLNTSH.SO, located in the Oracle client library folder to be linked at compile time. 
on the debug optimize tab, we have selected the dash G compiler flag. This is required by the debugger. On the warnings tab, we have selected the dash W compiler flag. This eliminates non-critical compiler warnings. Now, let's build the project. Click on project on the main menu, and select clean from the drop down menu. On the clean window, keep the defaults. Click OK to build the project. Now, let's take a look at the compiler console, and see what happened. The build is complete. This is the output in the compiler console. Let's examine what happened. First, the compiler, COBC, takes the ProCobDemo.pco source file, and builds a command line with the dash preprocess compiler flag. Then, we see that precomp.sh is run. Precomp.sh is our command file which is designed to run the Oracle ProCobol precompiler. Finally, the compiler creates the compiled and linked object file in the object subfolder. When the process is complete, we see the build complete message. Now, we will set our run configuration. In the run configuration, we will set the environment variables required by COBOL IT and Oracle for the runtime environment. To create a run configuration, select ProCobDemo.pco in the navigator window by clicking on it. Then, right click on ProCobDemo.pco to see a drop down menu. Select Runners from the drop down menu, and run configuration from the subsequent drop down menu. This will open the run configuration wizard. Select COBOL program in the panel on the left. Then, click on the new launch configuration toolbar button. This will create a new run configuration. On the main tab, name the configuration ProCobDemo.pco. The project and program values are pre-filled with Project1 and ProCobDemo.pco. Now let's look at the Runtime tab. On the Runtime tab, you should not have to make any changes. The Runtime tab sets the name of your runtime and debugger, as well as scripts that should be run before the run or debug command is launched. Let's proceed to the Environment tab. On the Environment tab, we set the environment variables required by COBOL IT and Oracle Pro COBOL. Set COB error file to COBOL.txt. If there are any error messages, they will print to this file. Set COB library path to include your object folder, and to include the location of the Oracle client library folder. Click Apply to accept your changes. Click Close to return to the developer studio. Now let's run the sample program. To run the Oracle Pro COBOL sample program, click on the Run button on the toolbar. You will notice that for this exercise, we have docked the console view window next to the outline view window. The output from our program will be written to the console view window. The program has finished running. The output from the Procop demo program is displayed in the console view window. Let's return to the developer studio and run the Oracle Pro COBOL sample program in debug. To run the Oracle Pro COBOL sample program in debug, click on the debug button on the toolbar. This will open the program in the debugger perspective. This is ProCobDemo.pco running in the COBOL IT debugger. Now, we will set a breakpoint on line 55, so that we can step through an exec SQL statement that returns data to our program. We will also set a breakpoint at the end of the program, on line 85. Now, let's run to our first breakpoint. We have run to our breakpoint so that we can perform an exec SQL fetch statement. 
This statement will return data into our working storage section, and be displayed in the variable view window. Let's perform a single step here. We have performed the step, and you can see the data has been returned into the variable view. Let's continue to step, so that we can update our console view window with this information. Our fetch loop ends with a display statement. We can see that our console view window has been updated. Let's run to the breakpoint at the end of the program now. Then we can look at our final output display. We have run to our final breakpoint. The final output display for our sample program is in the console view. Here, we will terminate our debug session by clicking on the terminate button on the debug toolbar. Now, let's proceed to our summary. Summary. In this module, we configured our workspace and our project for use with Oracle Pro COBOL in the developer studio on Linux. We illustrated the use of the dash preprocess compiler flag. Using the Oracle Pro COBOL sample program, we performed compile, run, and run in debug exercises. You are now prepared to use the Oracle Pro COBOL precompiler in the developer studio on Linux. For more detailed information, and the very latest reference documentation, please visit the doc folder under your COBOL IT home directory. We encourage you to continue using the COBOL IT online training program. Thank you.